Romans 12, 1 and 2 say this, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You see, I love to think about my relationship with God in terms of like a normal relationship. In reality, it's the most important relationship that I have. And how I embrace that relationship is the only thing that's going to matter about me in 100 years. Because in 100 years, there's no doubt I will be fully present in the incredible reality of eternity. In this session, we're going to process the basis of, basics of how I work on my relationship with God. This is going to be a jumping off point to set off on the adventure of discovering more and more about this God who birthed you into existence and gave you the gift of life. In 2014, a friend of mine texted me and asked me a terrifying question. He wanted to know if I would run the country music half marathon with him. Now, you, you have to understand that my initial response was a fearful no, but over time I talked myself into this challenge and I said yes. And that yes started me on a journey of discovering so much about the power of focused and consistent work centered on our goal. For months, three mornings a week, we met at a road named Sango Road, and each of those mornings, in rain, snow, or sun, we ran a little further every week. And every morning, I had to push myself to choose to do something I did not naturally want to do. Everything in me tried to push me to stay in bed, but I had to choose to get up and run, choose to meet my friend, choose to push a little further. Finally, the race day came, and I ran, I walked, I pushed through 13.1 miles, and I arrived at my destination because of focused and consistent work. See, just like that training process, if our goal is to have a real relationship with God, then we have to understand that comes with the demand for working on the relationship. It's our direction, not our intention, that determines our destination. And we have to aim our hearts toward God by working on that relationship. Before we look at our passage of Scripture today, let me make sure you understand clearly this central idea. Your relationship with God will require focused and consistent work. Now let's reread an incredible passage of Scripture, the one I read at the beginning of the session. If you have your Bible with you, make sure and grab it, and maybe even pause this session and read the entire chapter. But make sure and focus on the very first two verses. Let's reread those two verses again together. Romans 12, 1 through 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. You see, in order for our relationship to thrive with God, there are some big ideas that this passage, these two verses reveal. The first idea is this. Don't be conformed to this world. See, there's a natural draw to be like our surroundings. Dress, tech, language, entertainment, status, power. They're all shaped, and we are drawn to just to kind of conform to that. The trap of conforming draws us away from Jesus, who walks in a different way than the culture. The heart of the teachings of Jesus walks against the things that the world values. And to aim our heart toward a relationship with God means that you will often walk against culture. The second principle is this. Be transformed. Be transformed. You see, this is more than a prayer and a set of rituals. We are called to change. You are not meant to be the same as last year. Your journey is a journey of transformation and discovery. As layer by layer you throw off your old self that longs to conform and embrace the new creation Jesus' birth in your soul. That new you longs to come out, but it can't unless you are open to consistent transformation. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in your life, birthing life change. It's not just try harder. It's rather depend on God over and over more than your own effort. The third idea is this, like, renew your mind. See, transformation begins with how we think. The battleground for running any, grace, any race is the, is the mind. I mean, your mind shapes everything that you do or do not accomplish in life. And when trying to have and learn, like on the master, like the plan here, the battleground starts in your mind. Accomplishing anything that matters in life takes focus, consistent dedication. And that journey begins with changing the way that you think. The last principle in that passage is this. Discover God's 
plan. When we embrace transformation, we can actually begin to understand what God is doing in our life. See, our minds begin to be able to see His purpose worked out. The end result of this pursuit of a relationship with God is the ability to see where God is leading you more clearly and quickly. And the more we know God, the more than we can detect His work in our life. So you may read Romans 12 and be inspired, but inspiration quickly fades without a plan of action, a plan of attack. The question when it comes to fighting for a relationship with God is what do I do and where do I start? Let's walk through some practical steps to chase after this relationship. The first place to start is read God's thoughts. Read the Bible. You see, what's God's will? He's actually made it clear. In the Bible, this is his story, the story of God, and we read it and we see more of who God is. It's just critical that you ingest the words of God so that you can get to know the God who's revealed himself through this collection of writings in the Bible. So you can start small, but it has to be a consistent practice if you're ever going to expand on your relationship with God. The second place to start is this, communicate with God. Pray. So you have to have a daily discussion if you're going to connect with your maker. You see, some of that comes through silence and listening, and some comes through praying through what you, what you need and through what you read, and some, of you, some through inviting Jesus to rescue and restore your soul from the sins that we get stuck in. Some through asking for basic needs, for Jesus to be a part of your normal life. You have to talk with Him daily. This other idea is this, track progress, maybe journal. Write it out, type it, but track weekly what's going on and what you're praying for. Things become real when you write them out and when you can look back on them and see what God's done. We are creatures of the immediate. So the teaching, teaching of this journey and journaling allows us to see patterns that easily are missed. The last idea is this, dwell on God's thoughts. Memorize Scripture. There are just certain truths that we need to embed in our hearts. We have to replace lies with truth. And some of that comes through memorizing important verses for our soul. Some comes from filtering out what we do or do not watch. Some comes from the music that we listen to during the day. Truth has to replace the lies that we believe. The last place to start is this. Surround your lives with other Christ followers. Plug into church. Now, we are not meant to follow Jesus in isolation. It's in community that we find strength and protection. Your time at church is, is a place where you come around other people and you don't trick yourself into thinking that you have it all together. We are a part of a larger movement of God, and we are not an army of one. We are made to be with other followers. You see, these practices are the beginning of working on your relationship with God, and they will not come naturally. You have to choose to make the effort. You have to choose to put your relationship with God in the driver's seat of your personal priorities. Finding your rhythm is a process, but start it today. Every day is another chance to take another step toward Jesus, and you can do that.